So I'm excited to be here with David Hagley, who is the current Vice Mayor of Healdsburg City Council. Um, so yeah, welcome David. Thank Good you for here. agreeing to sort of chat with me today. Um, yeah, maybe just start off giving, you, giving us a little introduction about yourself and your background and obviously your current role. Oh, sure. So um, yeah, I was elected in 2016 to the Healdsburg City Council uh, and served as mayor in 2019. Uh, and currently, and then was re-elected in 2020 to another four-year term and currently serve as vice mayor of our beautiful city of Healdsburg. Cool. And, you know, you obviously, David's been heavily involved in many of the great things that have been happening in Healdsburg. He's obviously, you know, served on the council for a number of years now. Um, and I know, so what we want to do is just talk through, you know, some of the current developments, you know, talk a little bit about the future. Um, but I want to start off really talking about, you know, a lot of people will say, oh, you know, Healdsburg, it's not, it's not what it used to be. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you hear that the whole time. What, what's, what's your reaction to that? So I, I think any town or city, you go anywhere, could, could, the same thing could be said about that. What, we're, what we really strive for in Healdsburg is to honor the past and see what we can do, you know, because cities, they do evolve and grow. How do we do that in a healthy way that really ultimately supports the people that live here, our neighbors, the community members, you know, the people that actually live here all the time? So do you think there have been some you know, key decisions that have been made um, where it's taken Healdsburg in a specific direction um, you know, for, the, for the overall benefit of the, of the city? And if it had taken a different decision, we'd be in a very different place now. So I think if you look back at some of the, the larger historical decisions, some of them were not even within our control. But if you look at like the decision of Highway 101, not going through the city of Healdsburg, like bypassing it kind of. Mm. Um, and that really allowed the through traffic to avoid going right through the middle of mm. our town. Uh, but we're close enough that it made it real accessible for people to come and visit and uh, go to work or whatever. Uh, the other one really was er, in the early 80s, a decision was made, you know, when people were looking around at, at what we had here, where we lived and how gorgeous this was. Like, okay, we really need to focus on the tourism side to really support our economy. And with that, you know, Healdsburg has done an excellent job. And there are some people that would argue too excellent. <laughs> mm. And that, that there may be a, some argument for that. But what... The other thing that they did with that was when they set up the transit occupancy tax, some of the stuff that people don't really see behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. When the decision was made to focus on tourism, uh, previous councils made a conscious decision to structure the transit occupancy tax to support the community, meaning 10% of what a visitor pays goes to support and pay for our parks the parks that we enjoy, the community events that we enjoy, the Tuesdays on the plaza, all of that is paid for by the people that come visit here. Mm -hmm. So there's been a huge benefit to not only people coming here because they want to come, they love it, that they enjoy everything that we get to enjoy here in Healdsburg, but when they leave, there's an ongoing benefit for the community of the amenities that we get to enjoy as locals that live here. Hmm. And, you know, and a lot of that benefit is obviously, you know, comes from, from the hotels. And I, I suppose it's like anything, you can have sort of too much of a, of a good thing, and which is one of the reasons why, you know, there's now a limit on the number of hotels in the downtown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's a, a, a decision that, um, that was made a couple of years ago. Um, and really where we've been trying to focus is on housing and trying to go higher density on housing and trying to make Healdsburg more walkable. Uh, you know, the climate issues are really important to the residents of Healdsburg and that's reflected in the work of the city council over the last couple of years with what we've been working on with the uh, expansion of the bike path. Mm -hmm. You know, the Great Redwood Trail, which goes from Marin all the way up to uh, Humboldt County, literally goes through the city of Healdsburg. I mean, that's an exciting thing. We have the smart train coming. There's a lot of things that are really exciting. So one of the other big developments is obviously um, the mill district as you're coming into Healdsburg from the south. And, and that whole entryway is going to be fairly dramatically changed over the coming you know, months and, and years. 
Yeah, what's really exciting about that is it really started with the uh, Central Healdsburg uh, area plan, the CHAP plan that was done a number of years ago, and that included the roundabout, which was controversial, if you recall, when that was being constructed. I actually went down into the hole when they were doing all the improvements to kind of take a look, and there were things buried under there, stumps, bridges that nobody knew about. But now the roundabout uh, works beautifully, keeping things moving along. It, it keeps the cars moving so that they're not sitting there idling. Uh, but along with that, the mill district uh, was part of that development. And it's really exciting to see what's happening there at that site. All the parking is on site. But what's most important is prior to that project being able to move forward, they had to start off with the affordable housing component. And we did a ribbon cutting for that affordable housing not two months ago. And I was able to meet some of the residents and every single one of those residents lives or works in Healdsburg. And that's huge because that's how you start, you know, that's how you maintain the community by having people living and working in town. Their kids are going to school here. They become friends with my, my kids. You know, it's, it's, a, it's the whole how, how you, you know, um, really build a community. Mm. And you know, there's a number of other sort of developments that are, are taking place. I mean, one of which is, um, I know it's going through the process at the moment, is there have been eight applicants for two dispensaries um, here in Healdsburg. And I think that's, that process is midway sort of as we speak, isn't it? Yeah, so we spent a, <laughs> at least a year um, on working on the process, the application process, to try to make it as fair and transparent as possible. Um, and we arrived at allowing two dispensaries here in Healdsburg. So the process starts off with an interview with staff. So they, there's a, a very extensive interview process, application process. The staff has completed their review and then it'll come back to the council in a public format where we'll be able to take in the, the feedback from the public and really see like, okay, what, what are the, the best locations? The way we structured it is the applicant had to identify a location, which I think is really beneficial for the community. So the community can weigh in that, hey, this is a great location, this isn't. It's, that's not always how things work. I mean, I, usually it's market driven uh, mm -hmm. where, you know, sometimes the person with the biggest wallet kind of does what they want to do. And this is an instance where we were able to um, do this application process. We can uh, do the interview and it'll be in a public open meeting. Uh, the public will see pretty much everything that we see and we'll be able to then make a decision uh, at that point. Hmm. I suppose I mean, at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's, it's the legal businesses and it's, it's another amenity in Healdsburg, which will be I know, presumably contributing tax dollars to the, to the coffers. So it means it's a good thing in that sense. Yeah. And honestly, the tax dollars are important, but that's not what leads me. And I don't anticipate that's where the rest of the council leads because we do have a very str strong budget, just like I said, from historical councils mm -hmm. have really set up the city to be, uh, to be healthy in that aspect. So it's, we're really looking at from uh, what is the best fit for the community. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, I mean, that's how I'm gonna approach yeah, it. absolutely. And you know, talking of the community and you know, things that are gonna be a huge benefit to the community, we've also got the, the Foley Pavilion mm -hmm. on the way, which is, which is exciting. I don't know what the sort of time scales are for that, but. So the, this project has been, originally it was planned as a parking lot and the building was gonna be demolished. And then there was a conversation and, and a fight to keep it because of the historic elements. Uh, and then uh, the Foley family is very generous uh, to contribute the funds to be able to save the property and renovate it. And so the plan right now is it'll be a, an event center. Uh, we're just finalizing everything. I think if you go by it, you'll see some fencing up and things like that. Um, but it'll also have the ability to ease some of the pressure that historically we've had on the plaza when it comes to events. And the perfect example is we recently have had a couple of years of the Hillsburg Food and Wine Experience, and they rented out the parking lot across the street from where the Foley uh, Family Pavilion is going in. And it was a big event, lots of people there, really nice. But if you go to the plaza, you could just enjoy yourself. Mm. It was quiet, and mm. you know. And I think having that—that that to me is balance. Mm. Where 
we can have the, the events that people really enjoy, the like locals enjoy mm -hmm. concerts or whatever. And at the same time, if that's not your scene, you can grab an ice cream and hang mm -hmm. out in the plaza. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that, to me, that's a, that's yeah, a it's great about choice. Like yeah. genuine choices. Yeah. 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 So switching gears a little bit, we want to talk a little bit about, you know, some of the sustainability initiatives and what a lot of people don't realize is that Hillsburg has actually got its own um, utility company and Hillsburg residents at the moment and we already get 60% of their powers uh, from renewable sources, which is, which is awesome. In fact, I think it was back in 2021. Healdsburg at the time, I think it had the biggest floating solar array in the US on the wastewater plant, oh, yeah. which is an awesome and, and, innovation. And what you forgot to mention is our utility, our electricity rates are about half of what PG&E, our neighbors are in Sonoma County pay. So that's a huge thing. So yeah, we're, we have our own publicly owned utility uh, and we're part of the Northern California Power Agency. Mm -hmm. So we have a number of sources that generate uh, clean power, such as the geysers, uh, our floating solar project, which will uh, generate enough power for 6% of what the city needs. Um, and then we're also part of the Lodi Energy Center, which we're in the process of uh, working to com convert to uh, generate and produce hydrogen uh, from that facility. And that's 300 megawatts that helps support the state of California when the, you know, the solar and the wind power disappears when the sun goes down or the wind doesn't blow, uh, the, the Lodi Energy Center can fire up 300 megawatts worth of power to put into the grid. And we're hoping that within five years, that'll be 100% hydrogen generated. Wow. And Healdsburg's a part of that. Yeah, yeah. And so does, does Healdsburg have a target? I mean, I think it's currently around 60-ish percent. I mean, is there a target? For like 2030, for you know X percent. Oh, don't, we don't know. Okay, I, fine. I can't. We just went <laughs> through all. I don't. There's yeah. so many numbers flying around. Yeah, okay. But I, I think the key message is like you know we're whatever the state targets are, mm. we're aggressive and mm. trying to. Yeah. You know, we're actually generating power that we can. Yeah. We're focused on getting clean. Yeah. And one of the things that Hillsburg's done recently is uh, to put in place a climate mobilization strategy and to vote on that plan. And that's something that was um, voted on, it's only a few weeks ago, wasn't it? And that's, that's gonna sort of further push the, you know, uh, transformation of, of Healdsburg and its sustainability. Well, the way to look at it is really, it's more like a guide. Because hmm. every one of the proposals still needs to come back to council and will be viewed in the context of that time. So if there's a specific line item that, you know, hey, we want to do this. We all know metrics change and evolve. It's a living document. So say two years from now, that agenda item comes up. It may not be exactly like it was mm -hmm. in the climate mobilization strategy, but it's a guide to kind of push us in that direction. And there's a lot of exciting things in there. We just went through uh, a drought. California has been going through a drought for quite a while. And uh, Healdsburg residents were able to conserve water so drastically that we were able to get grant funding to be able to bring purple pipe from our reclaimed water pond into town, which means that instead of drinking water being used to, you know, irrigate certain things, we can swap that out with uh, reclaimed water, which is which is great. Hmm. So you know, obviously, the, the you know, with with a number of sort of new developments, you know, any any city needs to ensure that the you know the infrastructure keeps up. And I know there's a number of exciting developments when it comes to you know transportation mm -hmm. both to Healdsburg. Um, but also within the within the city itself. So I know um, smart train is definitely a hot topic. I'm personally like super excited about it. I know it's been you know funded to the tune of I think 106 million dollars so far. So I think it's about 65 percent of what the, the money that it needs. Mm -hmm. um, I mean that's that's going to be huge for him. But... It, it's really exciting, and there's so many elements to that that exciting that's exciting is. You know, to um, we do have a tourism-based economy. Uh, that's a large chunk of that. Um, and what's exciting is the opportunity of people to ditch their cars and be able to take the train up for the weekend or come stay. And, and from that aspect, we also have the opportunity of people that are here to be able to commute out. Uh, and I think you'll have you'll see a lot of that. And I'm looking forward to the conversation on really like diving into the numbers of 
where the train, right now we're in the process of determining where the train station is gonna be. Is it gonna be in the current location, just south of the roundabout, or up closer to the Foley Family Pavilion and the West Plaza parking lot? Each of them have the plus and minuses, and it's a very public process. We've had one initial meeting, mm -hmm. actually two now, and we're gonna be looking for more public input after the past meeting with, you know, mm -hmm. comments from the public. So that's really exciting, and it'll have a, huge positive impact on Healdsburg once that train comes across um, because with that train also comes a brand new bridge across the Russian River that'll include a pedestrian and bike pathway attached to it which will help connect you know if you want to ride your bike to Windsor you'll now be able to you know to bike down to Windsor so that there's a lot of exciting things coming in around that. And as a keen cyclist I can definitely that that would be that would be awesome because cycling across more of a Bridges. It's, a, it's never, it's never, it's never like it's a tight. You've got to go quick. Yeah. yeah. And and just so on on the two um, on the two station placements. I mean, what are the sorts of things that you know will be taken into account? So cost is one. Granted, it's not so much on the on the city side. It's really on smart side. But cost is one. Um, you're also the depending on where the station is, there's gonna be impacts to infrastructure. Mm. Uh, if it's north of uh, the roundabout, you're gonna need two parallel tracks, mm. one on each side of the, of the platform. Uh, so that's gonna take some rearranging of some existing parking and, mm. and whatnot. If it's south of the bridge, that may not be an issue, but then you have concerns about what's the distance from where people are going. And we'll be looking at what what is the, the ridership, what is that gonna be looking like? Uh, which will help inform that. There's also concerns or questions that we need to clarify the, the connection from there, first and last mile. Uh, if there's the Sonoma County Transit bus routes, how does that connect? Mm. connect? So there's, there's a whole, you know, we're, we're kind of looking at it from uh, the city of Healdsburg as a whole, where that station should go and what the impacts are uh, and positives mm. as well as like the negatives mm. when you look at the negatives but what are the positives of these mm. locations so it'll and be a good discussion and that's really you know, it's really interesting to hear that because I think people often will you know simplify the argument to you know oh one is further away from the plaza or not and there's, there's just so many different factors yeah. that come into you know that that whole process so it's interesting, yeah. it'll be interesting to see see that how that all pans out yeah, um, and then they, there's another, you know, like huge infrastructure project, which is on the on the north side of town, isn't it? Going from sort of you know Powell up to sort of towards Montage on the Healdsburg Avenue, and you know you were involved in the sort of initial report, which I think the initial report in its own right was like four hundred and something oh. thousand dollars. It's like that a was, lot of work's gone into it. That was a controversial meeting, and in fact, it, it wasn't a unanimous vote. That was a three-two vote to advance that study. Mm. Uh, but it was one that I felt very uh, passionate about. I live on the north end of town, and this would definitely impact. You know, I see it on a daily basis. Uh, basically, what it would—it's the the Healdsburg Avenue um, Improvement Project, Complete Street. So we're going to go. Uh, we'll have um, uh, protected bike lanes on either lane. Right now, there's five lanes. It, it used to be the highway, mm. and so it's way too much street for the amount of traffic that, mm. that's there or the traffic that's projected mm. with the various developments that we have. Um, but there'll be protected bike lanes, one lane each way, and then a turn lane in the middle. And, you know, with everything that we've gone through locally, what's great is those protected bike lanes can also be emergency evacuation mm. lanes. So during an emergency, you're directing traffic one direction. Mm. So basically you get the five lanes back to send mm. people out if, in case of an emergency but you know it was something that i was really passionate about because i have young well they're not so young anymore they're 10 <laughs> and 12 but uh when i first ran for council they were three and five years old and i remember trying to you know ride my bike downtown and there would be a utility pole in the middle of the sidewalk um and those are the kinds of things that as a parent you know when you're you want a town that's more walkable, mm. bikeable, that you know, families you can go down to the farmers market or ride, you know, ride with your kid to school. This will help accommodate that. And it's not just for cars, it's a shared space that now bikers, people that are walking or jogging, as well as cars can move mm. in an orderly uh, fashion and, and, and safe. Mm. And that's what's really exciting about this project. And we have 
uh, a big chunk of the funding already there, and we're starting on that. So we'll probably start in the next couple. Of, I think next year, I think is when we actually start with some of the underground stuff. Yeah, and then, again, it's, there's a lot more that just happens on the surface. I know. Yeah. A presentation the other week, and you know, there's all all of the infra infrastructure under the road is also being upgraded at the same yeah. time for, for obvious reasons. Well, I think that's where anytime we're looking at a budget, so we usually go over our budgets in the first part of the year and we're allocating capital improvement mm. projects and streets are always a big deal because mm. people, oh, there's potholes in my street. Why don't you just, why are you just doing a slurry coat? Some of that's related to cost, but also a lot of it is we have really old infrastructure. We want to make sure that if we're going to dig up a street, we get that fixed. Mm. My biggest pet peeve is a brand spanking new paved street, and then a year later you come in and cut it up to like fix the the you know the sewer lines yeah, underneath. Yeah. And so we have a lot of aging infrastructure. So there's that overlay of trying to do it smartly. Mm -hmm. So the Healdsburg Avenue Improvement Project, uh, March Avenue is another one that's on our radar. It's a very you know road that's definitely at the end of its life. But there's a lot of underground infrastructure mm. that needs to be done and when you look at like the roundabout project the mm. amount of work that was done underneath mm. before we prettied it up on top <laughs> everyone just sees like yeah. a pretty little round it's, it's on the top, like the yeah. it's like the iceberg yeah. right everything totally. underneath is like that's yeah. the real work nobody yeah. sees it yeah but that's what all the money's going to yeah. no totally so yeah so we've talked you know a little bit about some of the current things that are going on um i, I suppose you know, you're, you're definitely very far-sighted in you know a lot of your thinking. Are there, you know, if you look forward Healdsburg in 10, 20 years time, do you have a view on you know where where we're headed and where we need to go to? Well, I think um, that's always a challenging thing because it's you want to look at the future while taking into account the past, but the context is key um retail has forever been changed with amazon you know we went through a pandemic and that changed how people dine and eat so there's constant things that ev evolve and shift what i've seen and what i believe is the more we focus on uh, making sure that healdsburg is accessible to everybody uh, you know look at things through the equity lens the people that have not been part of the conversation are part of the the decision making process as we're moving forward uh, doing what we can to make sure that people can live and work in healdsburg how do we expand um, you know people that if they if they have a second home here how do we encourage them to make this their primary residence mm -hmm. what is it that we can do to do those things connectivity, having the streets and the infrastructure. There was a meeting the other day on the various parks projects that we have going on. And we have some exciting park projects that are mm -hmm. that are in the works, again, paid for by the visitors that are coming here. And we're not just looking at the parks themselves, mm -hmm. but how do we connect those parks and kind of a connecting path through the city of Healdsburg because different people mm -hmm. take different routes to mm -hmm. do things. And on top of that, you throw in things like, you know, from the climate mobilization strategy, we're doing a, a electricity grid capacity study that really looks at, all right, where do we need to focus on the infrastructure improvements? So that if we're redoing the street and if we need to upgrade the, the utilities to that location, mm -hmm. because it'll, you know, we need more uh, EV chargers, mm -hmm. then we can start future proofing some of those to kind of help us get to where we want to be which is a uh, a town when you come down to the plaza you go to a restaurant you see friends you see you know your neighbors and you see people with smiles on their faces cool well i, I really appreciate you taking the time to to chat today i know we all feel very lucky to have you serving on our, our council so i appreciate thank uh, you, you coming in today that. and uh, i know you're a busy man so thank you thank you